Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I thought today I would put my new Michael Harding watercolors, the five ones I got for my birthday. If you've seen my birthday haul, you know what I'm talking about. I thought I'd put them in pans and swatch them out. And why wouldn't I do that on camera, eh? So, just, these tubes are quite full, which is not a complaint. They're expensive, so they might as well be full, right? And just gonna squeeze this in here. You can't really see that. I'm really sorry, I had to turn on the daylight lamp because it has gone really, really, really dark just before I started filming. And I think what I'll do, because there's, I don't know if you can see that, I think you can see the reflection of the watercolor in the cap. There's like lots in there, so I think I'm going to take some of that and I'm going to swatch that out. So I'll put the pan to the side. I'll put the tube to the side, upside down. Not upside down. I'll stand it up. And then I'll get some of the paint out of here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually wet this a little bit down here so we can see how it moves when it hits the paper and yeah I mean there's loads and loads of paint in the cap there so the first one is the ultramarine violet PB15 I mean it's kind of difficult to compare them to the other ones I have from memory right now because one of them came in a pan and the other one I'd put in a pan and only used it once the pan had dried so it's difficult to compare them like that but I want to do side by side comparisons comparisons anyway but this one seems nice and pigmented straight from the tube and I hope we'll be seeing some granulation oh and I'm going outside of the line There, see, I gave myself, I gave myself guidelines, and I'm still going over them. So let's put a bit more of the new paint up here, and then water it down a bit some more here, just to see, just to see what happens. I was debating whether, I sh whether or not I should put ultramarine blue on the list just because it's my favorite color and kind of the one that um, is kind of my benchmark but then I thought really do I really need another ultramarine blue and I decided the answer is no I don't it would be silly So the next one is the Terre Verde Blue Shade PG23. Let's see how full that is. Oh, it's closed very nicely, that's for sure. Well, that's a bit better actually. It's not quite so much overspill. Maybe it's just because I the paint around but it seems it seems this one is a bit less liquidy than the other one was as well you can kind of see it when you put it in the pan how it, how it settles down and this one keeps its shape much longer because look at this one this is completely filled out the pan there so. yeah, this is a bit more It's a bit thicker in consistency, I guess. But I think if I give it a bit of time to settle down, it'll be fine. So, but still, there should be enough in here that I can use this and not disturb the pigment that I just put in there. And, well, actually, maybe I will try to let them touch and mix if they're still, if it's still quite enough, because why not? All right then. I'm quite 
quite curious about this one because I don't think I have a PG-23 in my collection yet at all. So this one is kind of interesting and you know, there's a lot there's a lot less pigment in the cap actually, so I might actually have to go in there and get some out of it. Put my brush in. And I think the pig is the is this a, supposed to be a, like a weaker pigment? I can't even remember. But it's nice. It's actually quite a nice muted shade, and I think it might be nice for mixing. Next one is Transparent Oxide Yellow PY42. I have quite a number of PY42s, unsurprisingly. There's lots in the cap again this time. But I'm not quite sure if I have a transparent one. And that's why I got the, why I got this one. They have Michael Harding have quite he has quite a few. PY42s in his line of watercolors, but I thought I'm going to go with the transparent one because I want to see I do actually quite li uh, like using yellow ochre but I prefer I prefer my colors to be transparent, especially I'm I'm experimenting with portrait painting at the moment, and I think for portraits, ooh, this is a bit, the consistency of the paint is a bit funny, like straight out of the cap there, it's a bit, kind of a bit gummy, but maybe that's just because it's the paint that's stuck up in there, and I mean, I've just put it in a pan to let it dry anyway, so it shouldn't, shouldn't be a problem, I would think, I would hope. Yeah, that, let that touch a little bit and see what happens. I guess, well, I guess it's, it wouldn't be surprising. It's, it seems to me a bit weaker than all the other PY42s that I have, but then the other PY42s I have are all opaque or at least semi opaque, so it's not surprising to see that this one is a bit. Seems not quite as strong. And I mean, how strong it really is, to find out how strong it really is, you probably need to use it in, in a painting and in mixes and see how it goes. So then we have this next one that I'm really excited about. It's the Dark More Alone Earth PR 101. And from the swatch, on the website, it looked to me that like it's going to be a bit like carpet mortem, which I love. Plenty of paint in the cap again, it seems. And this one is really nice and liquidy as well. Just came out really nicely and spreads out in the pan immediately, so that's good. Mm, let's put it to the side and get the cap. Oh. Might help if I washed out my brush mine. Hmm? Okay. And, okay, there's a bit of mixing and mingling going on. Maybe not a bad thing. Mm, that is a lot of paint. And this one, I think this one, it's a PR101, I think it's semi-opaque at least. Uh, does it say on the label? Do, do, do. Yes, it's opaque. So, I just said I prefer my colors to be opaque and I stand by that, but sometimes some colors, some pigments just have to make an exception and I mean this is a beautiful color it's a bit 
It's not quite as dark as my as the carpet mohams that I have, I think. But I really hope this one will have some really nice granulation. So let's drop in some water and see what happens. But yeah, that looks nice. And I mean it's there's nothing wrong with opacity, of course, if you if you know, if you're aware and if you use them like on top of transparent colors, then you're gonna be fine. And then we have permanent brown, PBR25. I have this in my Rosa Gallery palette and I quite like that one. And I was just curious to see how this one compares. And look, there's nothing at all in the cap here. This is all. So that leads me to suspect that the, yeah, look, this is like really, I don't know, can you see this? This keeps its shape even more than the, what was it, the Terravert did, even though that's mellowed down quite nicely now as well on the pan. You can see that there. Oh yeah, this is really, you can feel that it's really thick and I've got a lot of pigment on my brush here. I mean a lot of pigment. <laughs> oh, but that's it. I think oh, I need to I need to compare my side by side swatches maybe once this is dry. But I think this is even redder than the Rosa Gallery version that I have, and it's a really beautiful one. So I'm really excited about that. Certainly, I think these, not this one, one, two, three, the first three and the permanent brown, I think they are going to be great for my portraits. And the dark mural on earth might maybe not be the best for, for portrait painting, but well, I mean, maybe like for dark hair and for some things it might be might be okay uh, for the last layer as well. But I mean, look at the way that granulates, that granulates really, really nicely. I don't see, well, I just really a little bit of granulation here and a little bit of granulation. I see some in the ultramarine violet, but you would expect that very much. This granulates really nicely and this is supposed to be granulating as well. So all the ones I got are granulating pigments, that's a shocker. If you've been watching my channel at all, you will know that I am a sucker for granulation, unfortunately. And you could say it's kind of a little of a peculiar palette, but then I have quite a lot of watercolors as well. So I went for some things that I was just interested in, that I know I'll use, that I don't necessarily have, have yet. Uh, instead of getting more I could have gone with more ultramarine and burnt sienna, you know, but what's the point of that? I know what ultramarine blue does and I know, I'm pretty sure my favorite ultramarine blue is Schmincke French ultramarine. So do I need to get another expensive tube of ultramarine? No, I don't. I've got enough ultramarine blues and yeah, I'm really happy with that selection and I can't wait to use these once the paints have dried. Look, this is really thick though. This hasn't even moved much yet. This looked really thick in the beginning as well, and it has filled out almost all the corners. Well, I can see three bits in the corner, and the other, the other three are really, they've just settled down nicely, so I just need to sit there and dry, and then I can use them. But yeah, here they are. I think first impressions are good. I'm not quite sure yet if the price tag is justified or not, but again, Again, I need to paint with them and see and compare them to my other pricier paints to see if that's justified or not. But I'm definitely happy with that selection. I can't wait to paint with them. So thank you very much for joining me today. Please give the video a like and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. And if you enjoy watching people swatch, because I've got more things for my birthday that need to be swatched. So that's going to come. And there's other stuff that I need to swatch still as well. And yes, as I can say again, thank you very much for joining and bye bye. Bye now.
Bye.